Welcome to our lecture online. Here we have an example with four fractions and the denominators are relatively large, especially 16 and 24. So method one is not such an appealing method where I would take the largest of the four denominators and begin to find multiples of that to see if the smaller denominators evenly fit into the larger denominator. In this case, I think I'm better off just using method two only. So that's the way we would do it. We take the number five and we realize that 5 can be written as simply 1 times 5. The number 16 is equal to 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. The number 10 can be written as 2 times 5. And the number 24 is equal to 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. So those are the factors of each of the four denominators. Now we find how many times each factor appears. The factor 2 appears four times over here, so that's the most number of times, so we can ignore all the other places where the 2 appears. We have the factor 3 appearing once, and the factor 5 appearing once. No, it actually appears once here as well, but we only need to account for it one time. So that means that the lowest common denominator is equal to 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 5. Let's see here, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, that's 16, times 5 is 80, times 3 is 240. Well, that's a big denominator, but it's a lot smaller than if we had simply multiply all the denominators together. So that's the lowest common denominator, we'll work with that number. So we have 240 for the new common denominator, the lowest common denominator. Now of course we need to find the corresponding numerators. And we do that by asking ourselves a question, but they have to multiply 5 by to get it 240. Well, let's see here, 5 goes 120 times, that's 40 times, that would be 40, uh, 48 times. I have to multiply 5 by 48 to get 240, which means I must multiply the numerator by 48 as well. 16 goes into 240 15 times. I have to multiply 16 by 15 to make it into 240, which means I must multiply the numerator by 15 as well. 10 goes into 240 24 times, which means I have to multiply the numerator by 24 as well. And 24 goes into 240 10 times, so I have to multiply the denominator by 10, which means I must multiply the numerator by 10 as well. So that's how we end up with our new numerators, the new corresponding numerators. So 2 times 48, that would be 96. 15 times 3 is 45. 24 times 1 is 24. And 10 times 5 is 50. So now we can simplify that. So this becomes equal to 1 common denominator of 240. We get 96 plus 45 plus 24 minus 50. All right. 96 plus 24 is 120, minus 50 is 70, plus 45 is 115 divided by 240. Well, the numerator ends in a 5 and the denominator ends in a, in a 0, which means they are both divisible by 5. So let's start with that. That's easy. So I'm going to divide the numerator by 5, and I'm going to divide the denominator by 5 as well. 115 divided by 5, that would be 23. And 240 divided by 5 would be 48. Let's see here. Can I reduce that anymore? Well, since 23 is a prime number, I don't think so. That's the lowest form I can write that, uh, that fraction in. And that would be the final answer for our sum. Well, actually, it's a, a sum and a difference here. And again, that shows that we can use it for addition, subtraction, doesn't make any difference. And in this case, when there's four fractions and there's a lot of numbers to deal with, this method is probably the best one to go to. The other method is a quick, quick method to, to use when you have few fractions and smaller numbers. But when the numbers become more complicated like this, I would stick to this method. It works. It always does. And that's how it's done.